Hi and welcome to Cosmic Consciousness with Cassia. On this channel we discuss all aspects of the ascension process. I have a variety of services that I offer to assist in your awakening journey and you can find those listed in the description box below. Today we're going to be doing the daily reading for Friday, November 6, 2020. And today's a day that's ruled by the solar plexus chakra and guided by spirit. And today is quite an exciting day. We have a new wave spell beginning. We also have a galactic activation portal. And anyone who has been following uh, may have seen that I put out the 1111 portal video last night. So I encourage you to check that out. We have been in the warm up for the 1111 portal since the 1st of November. And so we've already kind of, we're being prepped for this major activation that we're receiving, which is then prepping us for the major activation that we will be receiving on the 21st of December, right? But then we also have these little portals scatter, scattered in throughout the galactic calendar. And so today is just like a super super, super portally day, I guess you could say. And so we want to, of course, be careful to, or not careful, but we want to be cognizant of this and we want to be nourishing our physical vessels. We want to be paying attention and listening to our bodies as well as our spirits today because we are receiving a lot of energy. And this 13 day wave spell that we are, that we are initiating is interestingly enough, going to conclude on the 19th of November, which is the day that Mercury will will exit its post-shadow period. And so this is really interesting. I was listening to an astrologer that I respect a lot. Her name's Nadia Shaw. I was actually really fortunate to take a class with her recently. She is such a beautiful and incredible human being, such a light in this world. She's amazing. And she was talking about the last time we had this, this same thing going on with Mercury, right? Mercury in retrograde about to turn direct, right? On the election, this whole patterning was 2000. And we saw what happened in 2000 with the election. And so we're seeing something very similar happening right now. And it's very interesting, right? But it's also extremely nerve wracking. It has people very on edge. And so we met her prediction was that this was going to happen. And her further prediction, and she was right on the money with that, her further prediction was that we may not get any answers until Mercury moves out of its post-shadow period. And so it's just interesting that that happens on the 19th, which is when we enter our next wave spell. And so I think that this 13-day wave spell that we are in right now is very significant. And the energy of this wave spell is the white magnetic wind. And so the magnetic tone is all about unification and purpose. So it's about it's about unifying, right? Unifying as as a collective, unifying with with ourselves, with source, with each other, like unity unity, right? <laughs> And uh, how when we do that, when we begin to unify with the tr with our souls, with source, with each other, we then begin to find our purpose. And when we, we begin this process, we attract our purpose like a magnet. And so this energy is really beautiful because this is the energy of the 1111 portal as we are stepping more, more and more deeply into our purpose, right? And so we're feeling this buildup. We're feeling this energy coming. And so the guidance with the White Wind Tribe, right? The White Wind Tribe is all about communication, spirit, and breath. And so it's about communicating our perspectives and our ideas, right? Being open and receptive to each other, sharing our inspired ideas and thoughts with one another. And it's also about our communication with spirit and the way that we communicate, we commune with spirit. And that inspired, that's what we mean by inspired knowledge. When we communicate and commune with spirit, with our higher selves, and then we share that communication and that inspiration inspiration with each other. So we're really being encouraged to go above and beyond and to really look more deeply into things, to look from that from that higher spiritual perspective, to find that common ground, right? That unity that we can only find when we view each other as spiritual beings on a spiritual journey together. So this is going to be so important as we're moving forward, right? It says, let ears be open so truths may be spoken. And so we really, we want to, we want to be cognizant of that. We want to be constantly working toward that, being open, being receptive to each other, to different opinions, to different viewpoints, to different truths, 
right? Just really, really, really being open and receptive to that. Our abilities and styles of communicating shape our realities and our relationships with others, right? And so we really, communication and how we communicate and what we communicate with each other is heavily, heavily highlighted right now. And that energy of unity, that energy of of purpose is very, very, very strong. And we're reminded to constantly take it back to the breath, right? The breath is our connection to everything, right? It's how we take in that life force energy. It's how we transmute that life force energy as well, right? We can transmute that through using our breath. We can move energies through using our breath. How we speak, how we share with each other, right? Communication is facilitated by breath. So really with a heavy, heavy emphasis on the breath as well, and really how that breath can help us to become more calm, more centered in truth, right? When we are communicating with others. And if we find ourselves struggling during this time, just a reminder over and over again to take it back to the breath, to take it back to the breath, okay? The affirmation for for today, which will be carried on for the next 13 days, sort of overlaying or underlaying, if you will, the individual frequencies of each of the next 13 days says, I unify in order to communicate, attracting breath. I seal the input of spirit with the magnetic tone of purpose. I am guided by my own power doubled. And so what's coming through right now is just that every time that we communicate with someone, right? Every time that we communicate as well with the universe, with spirit, with our guides, let us do it with purpose, right? Let us identify our intent and the purpose behind our words before we speak them. And if our intent and our purpose is not in alignment with unity, then perhaps it is better to take that time to breathe. And so that's, that's really interesting that that's coming through. And of course, that's going to mean different things to different people because we all have our different perspectives and what enhances unity, what divides and what brings us together, right? But if we simply focus on that energy of unity, on that energy of love, if we simply breathe that in, we can come closer and closer to the understanding of what that means for us. And then we can communicate with purpose and intent. We have an interesting day going on astrologically as well. We still have the moon in Cancer. We now have a T-square. It's just T-square after T-square after T-square, which is so intense, right? T-squares are one of the most intense and provoking combinations. One of the, it gets more intense, right? We have the yod, we have some other things, but the T-square is a very modify, uh, modifying, um, mobilizing, what's the word I'm looking for? It's an energy that gets us moving, basically, mobilizing. There we go. So this one is between the moon, Jupiter, Saturn, and Pluto, and Mercury. And this is a loose T-square, but I absolutely believe that we are feeling the energies of this. So we have the moon in Cancer over here. We have Jupiter, Saturn, and Pluto in Capricorn over here, right? And then we have Mercury squaring each of these, these sectors of planets, right? And so as we know, Mercury would be the focal point of this T-square. And what is Mercury about? Communication, right? Fair and balanced communication in the sign of Libra, which is where we're finding Mercury right now. So it's very interesting how this energy complements this white, this white wind energy, right? And so we are, we have our emotions, we have, which are for a lot of people extremely intense right now, right? Even more intense in the sign of cancer, all right? This is the moon's, cancer is the sign that the moon rules. And so the moon is 100% the moon's energy right now. And then we have, we have Pluto, we have Jupiter, and we have Saturn, right? And so this is, we can see this, Pluto, Jupiter, and Saturn are the planets, the conversations that they have been having more than anything else, right? except perhaps Uranus as well. Uranus is transit in Taurus, right? But these three planets 
are responsible for so much of the change and the upheaval, right? They are facilitating those energies. And so we can see this as our emotions being at odds with the upheaval and the chaos that we see in the world with whatever this is bringing up for us as far as our belief systems go, as far as our faith goes, as far as our dogma goes, right? Our morals, our ethics, our own empowerment, our desire to feel empowered, our own personal authority and how that clashes is complemented or not by the authorities we see in the world right now. This energy over here at odds with our emotions, with our desire to, to nurture and be nurtured, to feel safe, to feel secure, right? Our intuitive, highly feminine aspect, right? In its, in its most gentle, intuitive, and emotional nature, very much at odds with all of this, this, this chaos in the world right now and in our own lives, however that is reflected back to us, right? And so the midpoint, the middle ground in that is Mercury and Libra. It is looking at things, right? Mercury represents communication and the mind. So it's looking at things from that fair and balanced and unbiased perspective, right? Uh, Libra is an air sign. It does not have emotional deta attachment. It looks at everything in that detached manner through a logical eye, right? And then we have the communication piece, communicating in that same fashional, communicating not from a place of emotion, but from a place of logic, also a very a fair and balanced and harmonious approach to our communication styles, right? So this is what we're being asked to do. We have had that incredible like that higher perspective when we had that opposition of Mercury and Uranus, which is the higher octave of Mercury, right? And we had this retrograde that's really been pushing us when it comes to our perspectives, when it comes to our way of seeing and understanding people, things, information, our own truths, our own belief systems. This has been going through an upgrade. So we're being asked to call upon that upgrade and to to communicate and to, to organize our own minds and our own personal information through that fair and balanced and slightly detached lens, right? It sounds cold to say to be detached right now, but a certain level of detachment is necessary so that we don't get sucked into the emotion, right? Because a lot of the emotion that we're being pulled into right now is very extreme. It's very polarized. That emotion, when we engage, right, it sucks us into this vibration and this energy that we may or may not want to be in. So we want to be really cognizant of our emotions and what they're telling us about the type of energy that we're being pulled into. And if we feel other people pulling us into that energy, we are allowed to disengage. If we feel us pulling ourselves into that energy, we are allowed to disengage, right? We do not have have to we do not have to be victims to that emotionality we can use that loving emotion right but when it becomes destructive we are allowed to disengage and i want to pull a couple black moon astrology cards clear what messages what information do we have for today november 6th 2020 november 6th 2020 yes we are being infused with so much light right now, right? Um, we had the purging process throughout the month of October as we, we delved deep into our shadow, as we shed things, as we made space for that light. And now we are being filled with that light. And it may not feel that way, but remember also light is information. And so if we are being filled with information right now, that may feel uncomfortable if that from information is foreign to us right? It may not feel like a good thing. And there is so much more information that is going to be made available to us. I can just feel it, especially when we have this this final conjunction of Jupiter and Pluto. Oh, wow. That went far. Hold on. Let me see what just came out. You guys. Black moon Lilith mystery. Yes, there is so much mysterious energy in the air right now. There is so much that is not known. There is so much that can't be seen, right? And I'm actually going to look at, and this is card number 12. Interestingly enough, that is the day of the, the Jupiter-Pluto conjunction that I was talking about when this card popped out is the 12th. Uh, yeah, I wanted to, I wanted to look this over. 
Astrologically, Black Moon Lilith represents soul expansion and cosmological awareness, the force and aloneness and the path of the individual. Black Moon Lilith is a dark goddess. She is a ghost to the moon. As a shift in power and consciousness, she symbolizes destruction before creation. The name Lilith means screech owl or night hag. And so I love that. The shift in power and consciousness, right? That is what we are experiencing right now. That is what we're seeing right now. The destruction before the creation. That is the process that we are in, right? And that looks like absolute chaos and pandemonium because it is so mysterious. Because so many of us aren't certain of what is on the other side of that, right? People are clinging to the old. They're clinging to what they knew. They're clinging to the rhetoric, the belief systems, right? The storylines, the narratives that they knew and know and understand. And that makes perfect sense because even if it's dark, at least you know it and you understand it and you know how to operate within that framework, right? We're being thrown into a completely new, a new, Ah, words, words, words. Why are they so hard sometimes? <laughs> uh, a new paradigm, a new situation, right? Uh, whatever the word is that I'm looking for. And we don't know how to operate under that system because we've operated under the system and the beliefs that we've known for so long. So it is absolutely terrifying, right? But this energy is all about the development of the individual self, right? The, the courage to be who we truly are and be unapologetic for that. The courage to stand in our changing knowing and truth and be unapologetic for that. That is also what this energy is about. Lilith is the ancient goddess of mystery and transformation. Yes, I love that. Yes. Lilith is a feminine force of command and strength. She represents the powers we hold in secret. When this card turns up during a reading, something lurks. Lilith appears as the dark part of the astrological chart. She is our shadow side, the dark face of the moon where mysteries and unexplained occurrences lie in wait. This card indicates a call to wildness, even subversion. Lilith is the evocation of what may or may not be there. She can manifest as madness or self-realization. Lilith refu re represents a refusal to submit. So it is not a good time to give in, even when the path seems a rough one. Okay? So she can manifest as madness or self-realization. And so that's what's going on right now. We are being given the opportunity to progress, to expand our perception and our minds, to, re to fully realize the self and to fully realize and digest, right, the amount of light information that we are being given right now. However, there are two ways that that can go. We can either embrace that and the chaos and the confusion and the uncertainty that that brings, or we can descend into madness. And we see that happening with people right now. So that is, that is absolutely on point. Right. And this refusal to submit, this is also a reminder. Do not back down what you know to be, be and believe to be true in your heart of hearts, deep within your soul. Do not abandon that. But also, if you are be, becoming ready to question that, allow yourself to go down that path. But all we have to do right now is ask for truth to be revealed, ask for truth to be shown to us and be open to how that shows up, right? Truth will be revealed more and more if we request it and if we show up to receive it. Yes, all right. Lilith is a subdued power and complicated magnetism. Lilith remains awake while the rest of the world is asleep. She is the dark thoughts that enter our consciousness just before we fall asleep. I love this. This, uh, oh my God, this is so good today. This, this, this energy here. Mm. Lilith remains awake while the rest of the world is asleep. And how painful is that to be awake while the rest of the world is asleep? But understand, the world is waking up 
and it is it is sometimes scary and it is ugly and many people are descending into madness right the madness that precedes the self the realization the understanding the awakening and so we have to simply be present for that process to hold space for others as they undergo that process that we all went through as well to one degree or another right the the degree to which we are attached to our understanding of ourselves and our reality right the degree of our resistance is what determines how painful the process of change and transformation is and so People who are heavily indoctrinated, heavily entrenched in the old system are going to have a really hard time letting go of it. And that's okay. We hold the light. We hold the vision. We hold the love, right? And that's all that we can do. But do not question. This is a time, and I've been feeling this energy, and I've experienced it myself at times, where many of us are questioning our own truth. Am I actually crazy? Do Is everyone else right and I'm wrong? Right. And so this card is very firmly stating, no, you know what is true. Stand by that wholeheartedly. Right. We are watching the castle crumble right now and it's, it's crumbling. It's falling down. If we all of a sudden start questioning and doubting ourselves and decide to go try to hold it up, all that ha is going to happen is we're going to get buried underneath the rubble and we don't need to do that. Right. Yes. Oh, I, this is so perfect. This card, all of this, you guys, like, are you serious? You have a feeling that you are waiting for something to happen, but you don't have the entire information. So the facts are hidden or mysterious. Something stalks. You feel it. But Lilith is sharp. She knows. She senses. She processes what is there. Because Lilith feels slighted, she can represent a formidable foe or dangerous enemy. Through Lilith, we discover creativity and the beauty that can exist in the darkness, as long as we keep our own demons in check and under our rule. Is that not absolutely perfect or what? Honestly. I don't even think that we need to do any more cards. I think that that says everything right there. So what I'm actually going to do is pull a couple Keepers of the Light cards to close this out for you guys. I know, right? This is, this is so me, right? I don't think we need to pull any more cards, but we're going to pull a couple more cards. <laughs> and on the bottom of the deck, we have Virgo. I analyze, right? Analyzing, reanalyzing, um, allowing ourselves to be open to all of two different perspectives, right? opening up that mind energy is what I feel. I feel like there are people who are trying really hard to analyze this mystery and it cannot be perceived with the analytical mind. We have to go deeper than the analytical mind in order to fully understand and process what's going on right now. Then we have Paul the Venetian experiencing grace. Share your gifts with grace. Waves of inspiration and love are coming to you, right? That is what that energy truly is. It's inspiration and love right? That is what is truly coming to us. If we are open to feel that, to experience that, just know that that is what's happening and continue to share your gifts. Continue. This is, and this is going back to the 1111 portal video again, right? But this is a time when light workers are really being called to step up into their purpose, to share their voice, to share their gifts, right? You were, you came into this world with these gifts for a reason, with your voice, with your individual understanding of truth, because you were meant to share it, right? We spread the light. We spread the, the light, which is the information, right? And the love, which is the compassion, we spread both of those things any and every way that we can, and we do it with grace. We do it with understanding. We do it with tolerance and compassion when and wherever possible, and it is always possible. And then we have Hilarion, Divine Healing. Honor your sensitivity. Retreat to, to recharge and heal. Your light can support others. And if you are retreating to recharge and heal right now, that you're, that is growing your light. That is, that is allowing your light to flourish. So you are still supporting others when you do that. And it is absolutely okay to do that. Healing yourself, supporting yourself, nourishing and loving yourself is healing, nourishing, and supporting others. So never, ever, ever forget that. And then Serapis Bay Ascension. Move into your true self. Rise above the darkness. The light is here. Boom. Done. End of story, end of reading right there, right? 
the true self. That is what we are becoming acquainted with, right? Self-actualization, self-realization. As I realize the truth in me, I see that reflected because the truth in me, the truth of myself, of me, right, is the truth of everyone else because we are one. It's that unity energy. I am you and you are me. When I see the truth and the light in me, I know that there must be an equal truth and light in you. And as I shine that light in me, I give you permission to shine the light in you right? That's what we're doing here. That's what it's all about. Rise above the darkness. The light is here. There is only light, right? Darkness is only an absence of light. As we shine light, shine light into the darkness, we return the darkness to the light, right? The darkness only exists because there is an absence of that light. We can return. We can transmute that. We can bring that darkness home, right? The light is the only thing that ever existed, the only thing that can be, so everything comes from it. And anything we return to it, we are returning home. And then on the bottom of the deck, we have Jual Cool, Dharma unfolding. Remember that you are on a path, right? Take one step at a time to happiness. Take that next step that's in front of you. Don't worry about being 20 steps ahead right now. It's impossible to do so. Just take that next step that is unfolding, that is leading you further and further to your dharma, your life purpose, right? Um, we talk about the life purpose being activated. All of this energy is so on point for this 11-11 warm-up that we're experiencing right now. As well as Diana, focused intention and Isis, magic manifesting, right? Think about what you desire, set your sights high, expect the best, best possible outcome. This is what we need to do right now, okay? This was in the 1111 portal video as well. Our thoughts are so powerful and so hyper, hyper powerful right now, right? In this warm up, the 11 1 through 11 11 and beyond, right? But especially right now, the manifesting potential is at an all time fever pitch. What you think, what you believe, the spells that you cast, right? will come back as manifested reality. And so we want to be really careful about this. We want to really focus our intention on the highest possible outcome. What is it that we want to achieve? And if you're thinking about this in terms of the election, and as, as far as America goes, I know a lot of people, I live in America, so I am very much focused on this energy or I'm aware of it, right, and holding space for it, as are many, many people around the whole world really is watching this, right? And so... Don't even worry about who's going to win, right? We may not know for a while. There is so much that is up in the air, right? But there are people who understand that our expectation is going to, can possibly change and dictate that reality. So what I invite people to do, right? Because who knows? Maybe all of us are wrong. Maybe none of us really know what is for our highest and best good, right? Ultimately, only spirit knows that. So focus on the best possible outcome, not who do I want to win, not, oh, it's going to be, I want Biden, I want Trump, not that. Focus on what reality do you want to live in? How do you want that to look? How do you want that to feel? And then trust that whatever is going to be the most fortuitous path to lead us there will manifest if we put those intentions out, not for a particular outcome, but for the best and highest ultimate outcome of all. That is powerful right there. And we are, and then on the bottom of that, we have hope, right? Hope. Love and acceptance, right? That's it. We're going to leave it right there. That was absolutely, that was powerful and that was beautiful. I love you all. I appreciate you all so very, very much. If you like this video, hit that like button. Uh, comment below. Tell me how this video resonated with you. Tell me how today's going for you. I love hearing from you guys. There are links to donate to my channel down below. There's also a list of my services with my email. If you would like an energy healing session, right? If you would like a personal reading, the, those things can be so incredibly helpful, especially the energy healings right now. So please reach out to me for that. I would love, love, love to assist you with that. So much love and so much light and so much hope, right? To each and every single one of you, I honor you. I, I recognize the light in you, which is the light in me.